Welcome to worship. It's um, a pretty day outside. I know it's supposed to rain later, but it is Palm Sunday. It's a day of celebration. So we're going to enter this day as a day of celebration. Our announcements this morning. We want to remember in prayer Ms. Dolores Oakley, Mr. Robert Heath, Ms. Linda Blankenship, and Ms. London Godley. London is recovering from surgery, and we have, um, the others have ongoing health concerns. So keep all of them in your prayers. We also want to remember and pray for Miss LaRue King, who's also um, dealing with health concerns. And a praise and celebration is that Mr. Bobby is home now. He came home Friday. So that is another great reason to celebrate. We still want to remember him in prayer as he tr does this transition from um, to home and be with the family and show the support and love for each and every single one of them. So we're really glad Mr. Bobby is finally home. Another announcement is that the Bible Searcher Sunday School class starts next Sunday. They're going to meet at 9 a.m. So reach out to your Sunday School teachers if you're participating there. There's also four ways to give um, our offering. We can still give online. You can drop the offering here at church. You can mail it in, and now we're meeting in person, so you can drop it in the offering plate. For our last announcement for the morning... Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. It's a very special service, very special Sunday for all of us as we celebrate the resurrection of our King. It's going to be kind of a video, interactive video service. 
in order to participate, we have made kits for you to pick up. Inside the kits, you will find everything you will need for the service. There's going to be a couple of things that you will need um, additional, nothing, nothing that you can't already find at home, like a cup of water. But each thing will have cards and stations, and will tell you what station you need when you need it. So make sure if you're worshiping with us at home next week to pick up a bag. If you can't pick one up from the church starting today, um, reach out to the children's team, myself, Chris, or the youth team. We will make sure you have a bag in hand before next week. So make sure you let somebody know if you need one delivered or you need to pick one up before, from the church before next Sunday. With that, let's pray. Creator God, we ask that you be with all of our, our sick, all of the ones that we have prayer concerns for. Place your healing hands on them. We ask that you guide us in this coming week. Let us celebrate your son and rejoice that you have conquered death by rising him up. Help us to remember what the spirit of Easter is. Help us to remember that it is your son who brought us to you. Lord, guide us, lead us, direct us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask if the O'Neills will come and join me. Today is our baby dedication day. We are baby, we are dedicating Margaret Elizabeth Grace O'Neill. And let me tell you, I have struggled to remember to put Elizabeth in the name because she goes by Margaret Grace or MG if you're typing. Um, so Nigel and Laura came um, and became members of our church, what, three or four years ago? And I have thoroughly enjoyed having Laura be part of my children's team. Nigel is our honorary member of our service team, our children's team, because he kind of, um, hey, we need this, can you do this? But he is always willing. Lillianne, we dedicated Lillianne on Palm Sunday as well, um, right after she was born. And so it's our honor um, to dedicate Margaret Grace this morning. As a church, we want to make sure that we're helping Laura and Nigel raise the girls, raise Leanne and raise Margaret Grace. It's our job to be their support system and to be there for whatever they need, whether it's, hey, I need you to come watch the girls real quick, or I need you to pray. Whatever that na need may be, we are their village, we are that community for them. So we want to make sure we're there for them and we're dedicating them as they raise their girls in Christ's word and knowing that they know who Christ is and they have that love of Christ in their heart. So on the um, screens, you will see our um, covenant of dedication. So I'm going to ask, I'll read Laura and Nigel and then if the congregation. And if you are at home would like to join us, please do so. Do you recognize your child as a gift of God's creation? and give sincere and heartfelt thanks for God's blessing. Be to God. Do you desire that your child shall grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and do you covenant to offer your child through the scriptures and principles of a faith, loving and obedient reverence to for God and his son Jesus Christ? And do you dedicate yourselves to Christ and his church to live in such a way as to commend the Lord to your child always? As parents and congregation, do you promise that by giving of your time, talents, money, you will do your part in helping to provide spiritual, spiritual instruction and Christian training for all children, that they may, when they reach the age of an understanding, freely choose to accept God's gift of salvation, trust Christ as Savior, and follow him as Lord, and that you will continue to nurture them in the Christian faith as long as they and you are related to one another through this congregation. Thank you. Welcome, Margaret Grace, and we have a little gift. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9.
Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Our New Testament lesson this morning is from Matthew 27, verses 15 and 16, and then Luke 19, verse 36. Now, it's the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Oh 
family. The little boy was sick on Palm Sunday, and he stayed home from church with his mom that particular morning. When his father returned from church, he was holding a palm branch. The little boy was curious as to why are you coming home with this, this leaf, pretty much. And the dad explained, you see, when Jesus came to town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. And we got palm branches today to represent that. The little boy replies, all shucks, the one Sunday I miss, Jesus is coming. That's how we are. And this morning, as you know, it is Palm Sunday. It's the day taken from the Gospels where a whole city celebrated Jesus' coming. They threw him a parade. They waved the palm branches and threw their coats on the ground. And just the excitement of his coming. And this is how we got our word Palm Sunday is because of the palm branches. And it's the day marked for celebration where Jesus was worshipped and praised. However, today is a little bittersweet because for us, even though we're celebrating Jesus' is coming, we also know that Friday is coming. The cross is coming. We know that many in the same crowd will, within just a few short days, go from exchanging words of praise to words of death. Shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna! but then later shouting, crucify him, crucify him. I remember in college, we were having, I was part of the Baptist Student Union at ECU, and we had Thursday night worship called pause. It was a time for us to pause in our week and to worship. And, I, and it was student-led a lot of times. And I remember it was Easter. One of our students was leading it, and he had us, enact something. He said, this is what I want you guys to do. And we enacted the Hosanna, the Hosanna. And then he had us shout, crucify him, crucify him. And just that one experiment took him back that he had to stop and said, y'all did that so much easier than I thought it would be. He said, y'all switched that, flipped that switch so quick. He said, I thought it would be more Hosannas, Hosannas in the crucify him, crucify him, but it was the opposite. And we were college students who were in Paul's every week, in church every week, who believed. But how easy was it for us to switch from Hosanna to crucify him? And even though it was an act, it wasn't something that we were really doing, it was easy for us to pick up that mantle. So the morning, this morning I want to focus on those two different sides, the Hosanna to the crucify him and how it was and how it is should be. Now Billy Graham has been quoted many times as saying that the greatest mission field that we have today is our local church, us sitting right here in these pews. I'm not here to debate whether that's true or not true or anything like that. But I do know that what many people say, how they say it, how they act it can be a facade. When it's time to be real, when it's time to come face to face with Christ and what he is calling you to do, there's no personal relationship there. It's empty. There's no salvation. It's just empty words, empty actions. We see that perfect example where the crowd goes from Hosanna, Hosanna, and in just a few short days to crucify him, crucify him. On Friday, they were given a choice. You can have somebody pardoned. Instead of pardoning this innocent man, they chose this really bad criminal who'd done so many wrong things. And Barabbas was the one they set free, not Christ, not the one who was innocent. So what happened in those few short days for them to go from Hosanna to crucify him? Why the change? And there are probably several reasons, and some of them we're going to talk about this morning. The first is pretty simple. What they said, their words on that Palm Sunday didn't match the words in their heart. They possessed that casual commitment, not a committed faith. They had religion, but they missed the whole point of it with Jesus. They had Jesus right there with them, and they missed it. 
So it comes down to how can we have a committed faith? How can we be real and sincere and strong in our faith with Christ? How can we have that committed faith? Consistency, that's going to do it. That we have to be consistent in what we say, what we do, how we act. We have to be not self-centered. We have to be Jesus-centered, Christ-centered. And that sounds really obvious. Oh, yeah, that's easy. That's a really easy thing to do. But we often mess it up. Today, in the U.S., in this country, we tend to say, hey, God, here's my calendar. Here's my agenda. I can fit you in between here and here. Guess what? God does not work that way. Pulling out God or turning to God only when we it's convenient or necessary or when we need him, it's not how our faith should work. It, it can't work that way. Not should, it can't work that way. That's that empty faith that I mentioned. In the passage, people praised Jesus as, they, as he passed by. It kind of became the trendy thing to do. Some probably did have that sincere Hosanna in their heart. Others jumped on the bandwagon because the rest of the crowd was doing it. They followed the crowd. It's why in these few short days, it was easy to become following the crowd who was screaming, crucify him, crucify him. They liked him in the beginning because they'd heard about him. They'd heard about his miracles. He was the man who healed the sick and brought the dead back to life. And they praised him for that because they were serving, he was serving them. Then they also saw Jesus as a political move. He could deliver them from the Romans. He could set them free from Roman rule, just like the Israels were set free from Egypt. Again, it was more about the attitude of Jesus, what can you do for me? Not how can I serve, but what can you, what's my benefit? So later, a few days later at the trial, they didn't see this strong deliverer or conqueror. They saw this beaten and disfigured man called Jesus. They bought in to the words that were said about him, bought in to the lies. That position from Hosanna, Hosanna quickly changed to crucify him. It's all about me, 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 me. And that is still very evident today. I was, was doing this. I found um, a legend about a village in Spain. The villagers learned that the king would be paying them a visit. The king in thousands of years had never paid a visit to this village. They were excited and that excitement grew and grew. And they said, we have to throw this big celebration. We have to honor the king coming for the first time. So the villagers got together and they all agreed that we're a poor village. We don't have a lot to offer, but we all make our own wine. So we'll each get a goblet of wine and pour it into this large vat of the wine that we make ourselves, our best. And when the king comes, we'll serve him from our best wine. Well, they did that. The day came right before the king was supposed to come. The villagers all brought their wine and, and put it all together, and everybody was ready. And the king arrives, and all the screaming and yelling, and yay, we're glad you're here. And the king is given a silver cup and told, draw some wine. It's, it's representing the best that the village has. And so he placed the cup underneath the spigot, turned the handle, and he drank the wine. But it wasn't anything but water. Every villager reasoned that, you know what, I'll kind of hold back on my best and just give it water because one cup of water in thousands is not going to matter. Everybody else is giving their wine. My water's not going to be noticed. Nobody's going to know. But when the whole village had the exact same thought, what was supposed to be the best became the worst. The king, of course, was very dishonored and very, like, distraught that his people would do this so today being palm sunday what are we giving are we giving <laughs> the bare minimum are we giving our all are we giving everything that we have and who we are to him we have to give our best each and every day he doesn't want just here's a little bit 
He wants our whole self, mind, body, and heart. And many of those who gathered that day to throw their coats and branches into the street and they shouted the praises that they did, it was the popular thing to do. It wasn't anything but a facade. And our own lives of committed faith comes only through that personal relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. One where every day is fresh and new as he personally directs our steps. We have to let him guide our steps. In order to have that committed faith, we have to develop and maintain the relationship with him, which means giving him our all. Yes, it means reading the Bible and praying, but it means completely abandoning abandoning yourself to Christ. It means not being swayed or blocked by your trials that is going on in your life, whatever crisis has come up. A parade was trendy and it offered praise. Everyone was doing it. But at the trial, it was harder to speak out for Jesus because it was risky, even life-threatening at that time. And many of us come to Jesus expecting that everything should be good. We're Christians. We're going to have a great life. We all know that that's not how it works either. We expect, okay, we'll have some slight bad, but most of it's going to be good. Again, not how it works. The bottom will drop out from under us. And we often are left asking, God, why? What happened? But think about it a different way. Instead, why is this happening to me? Why are you doing this to me, God? If our faith is based on our situations and circumstances, we will never be committed to Christ. It's always going to be that casual relationship that can come and go. I've gone to many Christian events, whether it's concerts, conferences, camps. I've been to several throughout the years. And the one thing that's always in common with them is that when you're there, you're on a spiritual high. You're at the mountaintop, the apex, because you're surrounded with Christians who are praising with you, who believe the same as you do. And you have this spiritual high that you're going to go out and conquer the world for Christ. And it is a great feeling. From the youth that I was with to the adults I was with, we all felt it. And that's great, and those experiences are amazing, and I don't discount them. But when you come home, when you return to reality and you that bubble pops, where are you going to be? Are you going to be at the apex still, or are you going to let it drop out from underneath you and go back to doing everything you did before? Are you going to be committed? Are you going to stay true to the course? That's the harder task, is taking that mountaintop with you and living it every day day in the highs and lows because it's in our normal everyday life that we find him he's going to be there every step we take he's going to be there he's promised us that in the highs the lows ups the downs Christ is going to be there but where are we where do we stand do we stand in that crucify him mode do we stand in the hosanna mode are we somewhere in the middle but we have to decide as Christians to be in that Hosanna mode, regardless of what we're facing. Because in today's world, in America, in the U.S., we're being persecuted for what we believe. Regardless of how we believe, if it's something that we don't believe is right, we get persecuted if it's not the, the, the best, if it's not what the majority believes or feels or says. We get persecuted for that. It's hard. It's a hard place to be. And people have lost their lives and are continuing to lose their lives over stuff like this. So where are you standing? Are you standing in the Hosanna 24-7? Are you hovering in between? Where are you standing? Where are you going to choose to be? There was a little girl who had this beautiful flower. And when she looked at it, it was just a stunning flower. And then she looked all the way down to its stem and saw it was surrounded by a bunch of dirt the dirt was gross she didn't like it so she dug it up and she washed the dirt off and put it in a glass well obviously within a day or two the the flower was wilted and gone and ugly it had died when the gardener discovered what she had done he was like why would you do such a thing and she's like well the dirt was gross and ugly he said but you don't understand he said I picked that spot. I mixed that soil because I knew that that location would be the best place for it to grow and thrive. 
And guess what? God has done the same thing to us. He has placed us exactly where he wants us. He, again, putting us where he needs us so we can thrive. We have to trust them. We have to sing the hosannas and feel it in our heart, not just in our words and actions. In trusting him, we'll see that he's using the pressures that we're under, the trials that we see, the difficulties we face. He's using uh, those to make us spiritually beautiful. We have to trust him and have faith that he's there each and every step. That true commitment comes when we accept that God knows what he's doing and it's not about us. It's when we turn and think and praise him consistently, constantly, 24-7. So this morning I ask, is your faith casual or is it committed? As we approach this holy week, we're going to see where Jesus suffered. We're going to see how bad he has suffered incredibly for us because it's through him that we have that relationship and bridge to God. He's going to die on a cross, and he is going to conquer death. He deserves more than just a second look. He deserves all of ourselves. He deserves total control and total committed relationship with you. So the choice you have is where are you standing? I hope we all stand and sing Hosanna from the deepest depths of our hearts. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for bringing us your son. Thank you for giving us your guidance, your love. Help us to sing your praises, sing out Hosanna in everything we do, the good, the bad, the ordinary. Let us be in that committed relationship with you. Amen. Just now. 
As we go this week into celebration, remember what this week is about. Remember to sing his praises of Hosanna and to always keep it true in your heart. Go in peace.